Good morning, Rock Church. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? And all of God's people said, Amen. type it in for me. Uh, I love to see your responses. Uh, sometimes I can go back and look and see what people have said. So um, type in your responses. Um, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know that you're there. So um, we're, we're back in our regular worship area today, uh, live streaming. So uh, we probably look a little different than we have for the last four or five weeks, but uh, we're trying to get this set up so everything will be ready to go when we get all fired up and come back here in a few weeks. So um, uh, get ready for that. 
be thinking about how that's going to look, thinking about how we're going to move forward once we get past all this stuff. So, and pray for us. Pray for the Rock Church. We, we need your prayers as we move forward. I want to talk about truth today. Truth. Um, it's a lie. It's all a lie. Be careful what you believe. Beware of what you hear. How many times have you heard that maybe over the past month or so? And maybe even said it yourself or thought it. So here's a question for you. Have you been trying to, maybe trying and trying and trying to sort through all the information and the facts that have been flying at you? Have you been attempting to decide what is true and what is false? And really just trying to figure out what, what is it that you need to do? You know, we, we have all these instructions coming toward us. Uh, stay six foot away. Uh, wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Uh, we need a vaccine. We don't need a vaccine. We need, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to tell what it is that we need to do. And there's, all you have to do is listen to more than one news source to get conflicting stories. Um, I'm convinced that there's something that we need today more than ever. We always need truth. We need to know what the truth is. And so the truth's not always totally easy to find, but um, I have figured out, and probably you have too, we already knew this, if you really want the truth, Maybe the news channel or social media is not always the best place to get the real truth. So think about this. There, the news channels and other people that we might get our information from, they have agendas and they're pushing false narratives and their, their ideas. I have my own opinions. I have my own thoughts and, and that's what they are. They're, they're my thoughts. So I'm not going to try to sell those to you today, but I am going to talk about truth and where it is that we can go to get that truth. And, and it's not from the news channel and it's not from social media, not even from the neighbor, not from the doctor, not from anybody, not that I am necessarily taken away from any of this because I know some parts of a lot of things are true. But I'm not going to try to sell you something that I don't know for sure is true. So what we're going to talk about today is totally true. And so if you want to follow along with me, if you have your Bible app or your Bible, just kind of follow along with me as we, because I'm going to look at several texts today, and I'm kind of going to kind of bear down in, in 2 Timothy here just in a few minutes. But um, you'll find these words in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord. Now, there's not, there's not a lot of things that I guess we can get comfort from these days because it seems like there's something scary every way you turn. So, so we need something to trust in. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean into your own understanding. That's Proverbs 3, verse 5. Verse 6 says, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. And here is a little nugget of truth. You can, and if you're going to have peace of mind and comfort, you must trust him. Because you can't trust a lot of other things. There's not a lot of other things in this world today that are trustworthy. And so today, I want to think about, well, it seems to me, and this just hit me a few days ago, it's almost as if we're, our world today is trapped inside of an old TV game show. Think about it. And I know this is showing my age or telling you my age, and some of you probably don't even know what I'm going to be talking about when I say this, but do you remember to tell the truth? or truth or consequences. They're old TV game shows. And sometimes in our world right now, it sort of seems like that 
We're stuck inside of one of those old TV game shows to tell the truth. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining to you about what that was all about or truth or consequences. Um, you really don't know who or what to believe. But God's word is always, always, always. Say that with me. Always, always, always. God's word is always true. That would have been a good place for you to type in an amen right there or always. I need your responses. I don't know, is it kind of weird for you to talk to me when, when you know I can't hear you? Well, that gives you a little bit of an idea of how it is for me to do this whole thing talking to you when I can't see you. So respond back to me. Let me know what you're, uh, what you're thinking, how you're feeling. God's word is always true. And it has something to say about what we're, we're dealing with today. God's word has something to do and is pertinent anytime that we're um, dealing with anything in our lives. So I said a while ago, we're going to spend a little bit of time in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, and I'm just going to read the first five verses of that chapter. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time just kind of walking back through that. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. And this is what it says. <clears throat> I charge you, this is Paul talking to Timothy. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, re rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off in the myths. As for you, now listen close to this, because this is for you. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Now, just keep your app open to right there or your Bible open to right there. And we're going to kind of just walk through this. In this text, we find several things, but some things that I want to point out. We can find an explanation. Would you like to have an explanation for what's going on in the world? I, I, would, love for, I would love for somebody who really knows what's happening to, to give me an explanation. We don't always get an explanation, though, do we? Sometimes we just don't get the answers we want. But if we will dwell in God's word, and just like this text here, we'll get an explanation. We get some instruction, and we get some warnings about some things. And I believe that these things are very important for us. Now, no, it's not going to give you the answer about whether you need to stay six feet away from somebody. It's not going to give you the answer of whether you need to wear a mask or not wear a mask or take a, take a vaccine or any of those. It's not going to give you those answers, but it is going to give you something that, that's going to be probably, well, not probably, I think is going to be more important than the answers to those questions. So, um, and it's not only important during this pandemic, or whatever you want to call it, that, that, we're, that our world is going through. I mean, it, is it not crazy that, that the whole world is ex like, well... We've all thought those things. I, I'm not even going to spend time there, but not only is it important during a time like now, but it's always important daily. Even before this took place, these things were important. And Paul charges Timothy, he says, um, and, and these things apply to us. Verse number one, it says, and the times we are living in today. Um. Verse 1, it says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. So, there's some instruction. And as we look, as we look in verse number 2, it says, now I want you to understand something. When we talk about, when, when I say, 
or hear the word preach, a lot of times I automatically think, well, I don't have to listen to this because I'm not a preacher. This, this is just for the preacher. This, this doesn't apply to the general membership of the church, but, but this applies to the whole church. This is for everybody. When, when you hear these words, when we read verse number two, uh, don't tune yourself out when the first word there is preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Okay, so, so most of the time, and I've even, been, I've even been guilty of this myself, we, we automatically think that that lets us off of the hook if we're not a pastor or a preacher or an evangelist. But actually what it means is there is for all of us, is for the whole church. Uh, it's not just for the preacher. Preach the word. What is the word? The word is the truth, the gospel, the good news. What is all that? Well, basically, it's just Jesus. Do you need some good news today? Do you, do you need the gospel? Well, Jesus is the good news. Jesus is the gospel. It doesn't matter what time of day it is or night. doesn't matter what you're going through. doesn't matter if it's a pandemic or if it's, if, if it's a perfect world today. Jesus is the truth. And basically what it means for you and me is that we should always be studied. Okay? More than just skim reading through the Bible, we, and, and, I, and I believe this is happening probably now more than it has for a long time. People are bearing down in God's Word. They're opening it up, not just to read the words, not just so they can check something off and say, okay, I read God's Word. It, it literally means that we need to be filled, studied and filled, and willing to let the Word of God flow from us. Now, I know that that's kind of scary to some people, probably more scary than, than the coronavirus, because people are just not... A lot of times we, we've, not, we've not thought about the opportunities that we might get. And then if, if it presents itself, if somebody might ask us about Jesus or somebody might ask us about the truth, then we're not prepared. We're not studied. We're not filled. We're not ready. The truth can't flow from us because we don't, we don't know the truth. So verse number two. Preach the word. Be ready. Now, I want to just ask you, are you ready? Be ready in season and out of season. This was a weird season. I don't know if this is in season or out of season. It's just a, it's just a strange season. It's a different season, different than probably most any of us have ever uh, been through before. Be ready in season, out of season, All, always prepared and excited to share. If you're a Jesus follower today, you have something in you that other people don't have and desperately need and may not even know it. People, people hunger after the truth. They want to know what the answers are, but really don't know where to find it because they're looking in the wrong places. They're looking to the news media. They're looking to social media. They're looking to the doctors and 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 there again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that doctors don't have uh, wisdom and, and they don't have medicine and different things that can help people, but doctors don't have all the answers they never have had and they never will have. P politicians don't have all the answers and people are hungry and we should be excited to tell people what the truth is while they're seeking. Right now, probably more than any time in my life that I can think of, people are seeking the truth. They want to know what the truth is. And we have an awesome opportunity, we do as Jesus followers, to be filled and allow that truth to flow through us. And so I want to ask you today, are, are you prepared? Are you ready? Uh, are you ready in season and out of season? I know that even us Jesus followers, we're kind of distracted right now, aren't we? Things are different. We, we really don't. Uh, we don't really even know how to act or react in a lot of circumstances, maybe. I mean, you know, if you, if you walk around with some confidence in life, like you trust in Jesus and maybe you, you walk in somewhere and, and you're, not, you're not wearing a mask or you walk too close to somebody, then, then you seem like you're not sensitive or, or that you don't care about other people. 
if you walk around with a mask on and you, you act like you're afraid of the virus and scared to get close to people, then, then you're not living in faith. So, so what do you do? <laughs> well, be ready. Be instant in season and out of season. Be ready to give the truth. And first of all, we've got to know the truth. And in order to know the truth, we've got to seek it out. So be ready in season, out of season, reprove. Here's some words. There's, there's a few words listed there that actually they're, they're not really fun words because the word reprove means to correct. And I'll be honest with you, as a pastor, rebuke and reprove are two things that I don't really enjoy. You know why? Because if you rebuke people or you reprove people, they get on the offensive. They, they feel like that you're trying to uh, tell them what to do when, in effect, I guess you are. Because, But it's not under my authority or under my word. What I'm trying to, uh, the truth that I'm trying to give today is God's truth. So Paul tells Timothy, you need to be ready to correct people. If you see people that are wrong in God's uh, in God's way of seeing things, and you need to be ready to correct those people, to rebuke or reprimand even. Well, I don't go over very well, does it? When you, when you reprimand people, they get their feelings hurt and they turn offensive. But then it says exhort. And exhort means to encourage. Now, I don't know about you, but I, appre I, I appreciate encouragement. I appreciate somebody encouraging me, helping me along the way, but I'll be honest with you, sometimes reprove and rebuke is hard to take, isn't it? You know the old saying, the truth hurts. The truth may hurt at times. It hurts to tell the truth and to receive it. It hurts me sometimes to, to have to tell you the truth. And it hurts you to receive it as well as it hurts me to have to receive the truth sometimes. So we must deal in the truth. We as Jesus followers must deal in the truth with complete patience and teaching. And that's what it says. Verse number two finishes out with complete patience. The way to give people God's truth is not to take this and beat them over the head with it is to do it with patience and with love. And one of the best ways to do it is by example. When we live by example, when we do the word, then it's a lot easier to tell people, you know, there's another old saying, practice what you preach. So if I'm not going to practice what I'm telling you, then I shouldn't preach that, should I? Now, that's not to say that I'm always going to be doing the right thing, but we need to practice what we preach. That's, that's the ammunition that the world shoots back at us. When we start talking about Jesus, when we start talking about church and, and doing, doing things that, uh, that God's word calls us to do, people are like, well, the church is full of hypocrites. Well, I can't deny that. I can't deny that I'm not hypocritical at, at times. I think everybody is. There's not anybody that's, that's totally without hypocrisy in their lives. Because we're not perfect. But be ready in season and out of season. Be ready to accept that, repro that re uh, rebuke and that reproach. As well as the exhortation and the encouragement. So there's some instruction. Be ready in season, out of season. Tell the truth. Deal in the truth. One of the things, if we can't do anything else as Jesus followers, is we need to deal in the truth. If we taint it with any part of a lie that we're aware of, then we've tainted the whole thing. People can't believe, if they can't believe everything you say, then they can't believe anything you say. So, as Jesus people, let's deal in the truth. So, verse number three gives us an explanation. And this is what verse number three says. For the time is coming. Why, why do we need to deal in the truth? Why do we need to be instant in season, out of season? Why is it that we need to be ready to 
uh, correct and, and to encourage? Well, because of verse number three, it says, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. Okay, so there's the, the explanation. The day is coming. Now, I want to say the day is already here. It's not in, in Paul's day when he was talking to Timothy, he said the day is coming. Today, the day is already here. The day when people will not endure sound doctrine. They will not endure the truth, but having itching ears... And what that means, itching ears, is it means that they have ears that will not hear the truth. Don't want to hear it. You know, it's, it's almost like they would just um, stick their fingers in their ears and go, la -da -la -da -la -da -la. you know, that's how kids do. I, I'm not listening to that. I, I don't want to hear that. That's not something I'm interested in. So I'm not paying attention. So it says they will accumulate teachers to suit their own passions. Basically what that means is that they will find somebody that will tell them what they want to hear. So what does that mean? It means that they'll find teachers that'll say, well, whatever you want to do is okay. Just however you feel. If it feels good, do it. If you feel like it's the right thing for you, then situational ethics. If it's good in that situation, then do it. Well, there are people out there, and I'm, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to say, as the pastor of the Rock Church, if I see things that that I feel like are are not the truth, I, I'm I'm just going to have to say it. I'm going to have to tell you that I don't believe that it's that it's the right uh, that it's right or it's the truth. So. The day is coming, Paul said, and I'm saying to you that the day is already here. It's very evident. Uh, and, and I believe that if you pay attention, you'll agree. People want to hear what they want to hear. They don't necessarily, like I said a while ago, reprove and rebuke is not necessarily um, accepted very well. We're, we live in a, in a society where we feel like we should be able to do what we want to do. It's my freedom. I can live however I want. I can do whatever I want. Well, yeah, to a certain degree, you actually can according to man's law, but according to God's law, that's not true. So we need to be wise to that fact, to tell the truth. I, I'm trying to tell the truth this morning. I, I'm, I'm trying to break us out of those, those old game, uh, TV game shows because we just need to get right down to what the truth is. Now, there's also, in verse number four, there's a warning there in verse four. There's instruction, there's explanation, and there's a warning. Verse four says, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Hmm. Do we have any evidence of that? The warning there says they will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. What does that mean? They'll wander off into fairy tales. They'll believe lies. People have turned away from the truth and chosen to be entertained instead. Now, can I dwell right there for just a minute? You know, this is probably going to get kind of, kind of sticky for just a few minutes, but I'll, I want to warn you that I have to tell you the truth. If I'm going to, if I'm going to, talk about this, and I need to be completely honest with you. People have turned away from the truth and chosen to be entertained. Hollywood. We have chosen Hollywood over the truth. Now, this might be a news flash to you, but what you see coming out of Hollywood is not necessarily always 100% the truth. Will anybody agree with me on that? Type in an amen if you agree. It's the truth. What you see coming out of Hollywood, what, what comes over the movie screen or what comes over your TV screen, that entertainment is not always the truth. And, and we have chosen, this is a warning now, we have chosen entertainment over the truth. We've chosen, and I, and I know a lot of these, even a lot of these things are closed down now, but think about Disney World. I mean, what kid... Not even kids. You know what? I believe more adults love, love Disney World than, 
than kids because it's a place to escape. It's, it's a place of fairy tales. It's a place... Now, you're not hearing me say that it's a sin to go to... To, to go watch a movie, or some of them are. Some, some movies are definitely not fit to watch. Not for anybody, not a Christian or somebody who doesn't even claim to be a Christian. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to go to Disney World. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to be entertained, but it is a bad thing to choose entertainment over the truth. So be careful of what, you know, be careful of what comes to your mind. Be careful what comes through the eye gate. Be careful what you listen to and be careful how you're enterta entertained. We have chosen to be amused. Um, sometimes the truth's hard to take. So we choose to be amused. We'll go to amusement parks. There again, I I'm not saying it, there's nothing wrong with going to to Carowinds or any amusement park. I'm not saying that there's... But, we, but when we choose to be amused in our lives or entertained, we choose to be told things like, it's okay to live your life based on fairy tales and amusement and entertainment and lust and lies and fantasies. You know, that's where we get into trouble a lot of times is we fantasize about things things that are not and cannot be the truth, fantasy, fantasy will lead you down a rabbit hole that you don't want to go down for the most part. So we need to be careful as, as Paul is warning Timothy, we need to receive that same warning. When reality strikes, people don't know where or what the truth is because they've been amused and amazed and entertained and it's hard to discern what was reality. And, and it's that way, I mean, there's a lot of other things we could talk about. And video games, you know, I could, we could talk a lot about that. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with video games. I am saying if we live in, in, those, um, in those realms, and we've, we've got to know what reality is. And the warning is we can't live our lives being entertained and amused. We can't live our lives based on fantasy and know what the truth is. Does that make sense? Do you see what I'm saying? There, there's a warning there that we need to heed. And um, there's an application. Verse number five says, for as you always, for at, as for you, and I said a while ago, this this is for you. This is for us. This is for all of us who are looking for truth. And, and maybe even some of those, some of you who are, you don't even know. You didn't even know you were looking for truth. You didn't even know you needed the truth. As for you, and this is Paul saying to Timothy, as for you, don't be involved in all that stuff. This is how it directly applied to Timothy's life. And this is how directly applies to my life and is how it directly applies to your life as for you <clears throat> be sober minded hmm endure suffering do the work of, a, of an evangelist fulfill your ministry um I like to kind of like after maybe at the end of a text like that, just step back and say, okay, how, how is it that that really applies to me? If I were going to take the truth that I got out of this, and maybe I didn't even get all of it, maybe I didn't really understand it all or know what to do with it all, how would I, if I were going to, how would I apply this to my life? Now, here's, here's how you apply this in real time. As for you and me, be sober-minded. What does it mean to be sober-minded? It means to be in touch with reality. And like I said a while ago, not off in some rabbit hole chasing a myth or a fantasy or a lie. <laughs> Can I get an amen right there? Um, the, way that we, the way that we apply this is straightforward. Be sober-minded. 
not in some mind-altering stupor. A lot of people, I believe, in this world, the truth is too hard to take. The truth might be scary. The truth might be something that we're not willing to do. So instead, we do something to alter our minds so we don't have to think about it. Right? We seek some entertainment. We seek to be amused. We seek some mind-altering drug. Or, or we slip off into some fantasy, some, some fantasy-induced stupor. Now, I know I'm probably getting in trouble with some people because I've touched on some things that, that you know, they're, they're pretty important, I guess, to the vast majority of people in the world. Um, entertainment and, and sports and a lot of things I know that we're not able probably to partake in right now, except maybe on, on TV or something like that, if, if even these uh, sports events are even able to be, to be held People will fight you for their amusement and their entertainment and their amazement. But if we want to know what the truth is, we can't live in a fantasy world. We've got to live in reality. We've got to know what the truth is. Endure, it says, endure suffering. Don't numb yourself so that you can't feel. You know, and that's, that's kind of what we do, like, you know, some people will run to the doctor over if they stub their toe, they got to go get a, a drug, a, a shot in their toe or something to calm the pain or whatever. And I'm, but, but we do that, that carries over, I believe, not only if we're physically in pain, but if we're, if we're mentally or psychologically or um, spiritually in pain. Endure suffering, not, not to numb yourself so that you can't feel or flee from or escape from reality. Hard times are real, right? Would, would you agree with that? Would, would, would you agree that hard times are real? How many of you have ever experienced a hard time? And, and I hope that, you know, I, I know that it's hard to communicate with me, but right there where you are, if you've ever experienced a hard time, just wave at me or, or say, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've experienced a hard time. But, it, but here we're encouraged to endure suffering because suffering is real. And, and, and believe it or not, suffering has a purpose. There's a reason why sometimes that we, we need to suffer. We need to go through hard times. I, I'm not saying that God brought this, this crisis, if that's what you want to call it. I don't even know. I, I, hate, to give, I hate to give description to things because I don't really... It is a serious time, and, and I wouldn't want to belittle any, in any way the people that have suffered through this and doctors and, and, and uh, nurses and medical professionals and all those kind of things. I don't want to really say, I don't know if this is a crisis or a pandemic. I don't really know what you call it, but it is reality. It's real. Whether we want to believe it or not, it's real. Now, I don't know exactly how much of it is like it is being portrayed, but whether or not it's exactly the way it, that, that experts are saying it's real to us because look at our world. Everything's shut down. Like right now, I'm preaching to the backside of an iPhone. Right? I don't like preaching to the backside of an iPhone. I like to preach to chairs full of people. It's, that, that's the way I believe God intends for it to be, but we have to endure suffering. Even in the church, even in this situation, you might say, well, it's not suffering. Well, it's pretty painful for me. I can just tell you that. It's pretty painful for me to sit here, um, to, to stand here this morning and see all these empty chairs, but, but it's reality. So we have to endure the suffering. It said, and it goes on to say, do the work of, of an evangelist. And basically all that means is to go and tell the truth. An evangelist just goes and tells people what the truth is. Fulfill your ministry. Do what God has called you to do. 
Now, I know some of you, and, and there might be some of you that are sitting there listening to me today, and God's dealing with you. He is calling you to, to preach. He's calling you to step up and, and use your voice and, and your mind and, and whatever parts of you that it would take. He's calling you to be a minister of the gospel. Some of you would say that there is no way, no how. I've said that before too. Uh, years ago, I said, there, there's no, that's just, uh, this, this is a misconception. There's no way possible. So whatever it is, fulfill your ministry. Whatever it is that God's called you for. Okay, so here's the truth the way I see it. And I'm not trying to be negative today. I want you to understand this is, this is not, I'm not trying to be negative, but we're, li we're lied to every way we turn. Um, whether we choose to believe it or not, um, life is based on what we believe. Our life is based on what we believe here. And, and, and I'm going to prove to you that, you know, we're lied to all the time. We, and, not on, I'm, and I'm not talking about the pandemic right now. I'm not talking about COVID-19, coronavirus. I, just forget all that ever happened, okay? Go back way before that, way on back. Even go back to Genesis in the Bible, <clears throat> Adam and Eve. There's a lie there that, that Satan told Eve that we still buy into today. We buy into it hook, line, and sinker. We've swallowed the whole lie, and um, we believed it since Adam and Eve. Like I said, the devil, do you remember when the devil came and he was trying to, um, he was trying to encourage Eve to, to eat the fruit? He was trying to convince her that it was going to be okay for her to eat the fruit. What did she say? She said, we can't eat that. If we eat that, we will what? If we eat that, we'll die. And what did Satan say? No, you won't surely die. And basically what he said was, you won't really die. And so we've been believing that lie ever since. Now, I'm trying to prove a point here that we're, you know, we're lied to all the time. And, and we want to believe it because, and here's the truth. Here's, here's more truth. We are vain. Human beings are vain. We want to look good. We want everybody to recognize that we look good. Even, you know, I, I know that some people don't really agree with how I part my hair and those kind of things. Some of you probably would say that, you know, there's nothing cool about you. There's nothing that looks good about you. But we all want to, we, we all want to be, um, whether we do or not, we want to be told that we're okay, right? And I don't know what all Satan said to Eve. He probably come and he probably said, whoa, Eve, you're the best looking woman I have ever seen in my entire life, which would have been the truth because she was the only woman, right? So we've been believing this lie ever since Adam and Eve. And, and this is not going to be easy to hear, I guess, but I, I'm, I'm doing this to prove a point. We won't escape death. We will not escape death. Did you hear me say that? Um, I, you can go buy all the beauty cream that you want to. You can get Botox. You can get a facelift. You can drink from the fountain of youth. You can avoid the conversation. You can do whatever you want to do. Um, you can color your hair. You can buy a toupee. You can buy all the, the fancy clothes in the world. We can try everything that we want to do to try to stay young and, and never grow old, and it's never, ever going to work regardless of what the TV ads tell you. And that's one of the lies that they play on all the time. That's, I, I, I don't even know what the, the market for beauty aids and those kind of things are. I'm sure it's astronomical because we all want to try to look and... we. Here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to believe the lie that Satan told Eve all those years ago. You're not surely going to die. We're, we're trying to beat death. Now, like I said, this might not be fun, we, we, but we need to talk about the truth. We need to understand what the truth is. We're never, ever going to cheat death. The truth is, Hebrews chapter 9, 27 
says this. It is appointed for man once to die, and after that comes judgment. Now, that's the truth. If, if you, if you want to hold on to some truth, I told you, you know, sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes, sometimes the truth's scary. But it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. And I'm going to go on and read just a few more verses here that that's in this Second uh, Timothy chapter four. Here's Paul, okay? Here's Paul, and here's what he has to say: For I am ready, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteous, righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Paul had it figured out. He was ready. Um, that's the facts. We, the quicker that we make peace with those facts. Here's the truth. The quicker that we make peace with death, the faster we can live. The more fully we can live. Now, you know, I, I have no idea how much longer that I have here. I don't have any idea how much longer you have here. Obviously, I don't, I don't have a window into that. And, and you know what? I'm glad I don't. I don't. I'm glad that I don't have any idea. Um, I don't have any idea when that time's going to come. But the fact is, for all of us, it's going to come. So what we need to do is prepare. Here's what we need to do. Here's the truth about this matter. You, you and I today, right now, if you've not already done this before, we need to ask God to make heaven our eternal home. And if we do that, we won't be, if we know that we have a home there, and I believe that I do. I, I believe, I've already, I've already made preparation. I've already got my ticket, if that's how, what you want to call it. I've already made the preparation, and, and I believe that, that I have a home to go to when I leave here. So if we have somewhere else to go, and we know where that is, then it's not going to be so hard for us to leave this home if we know that our eternal home is going to be with him in heaven. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Now here's a question for you, and I want you to be truthful with yourself. Are you in Christ today? Have you already made that choice? Have you made that decision? Is it settled in your mind and in your heart when you leave here? And you know, I don't know. Like I said, if we're, we're all going to go one way or the other. It doesn't matter if it's by old age or by coronavirus. Doesn't matter. Doesn't make any difference. We're all going to leave here somehow, some way, sometime. So what we need to do is make that preparation now. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but that's, that's pretty exciting to me. That's, that's a, pretty awesome, a, a pretty awesome promise. I'm condemned without Jesus. I don't have the truth without Jesus. I don't have another home to go to after this without Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. And, and that's the truth. And I, I want you to have that truth today. I don't, if you've not heard anything else that I've said today, I want you to understand that He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. To tell the truth, and, and here's the truth, not having the truth will bring consequences. There are consequences when we don't live in the truth. So I want you to have the truth. I want to tell you the truth today. You need Jesus. 
I don't know if we need to wear a mask. I don't know if we need to stay six feet away from people. I don't know if we need a vaccine. I don't know all those things. And to be quite honest with you, I don't really care so much about all of that stuff. But I do care about where I'm going when I leave here. And I hope that you do too. And, and I hope that something that I've said today has sparked a want for you to have the truth. Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, then you don't have the truth. You're, you're living in a fantasy. You're living in some false place. Jesus is the truth. You have to know Jesus to know the truth. And so that's what I'm trying to sell you today. That's what I'm trying to give to you, the truth. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No man comes to the Father. No man is going to leave this place and go to a better place without Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm just so excited today about having your truth. Lord, I, I, can, I can do without having wisdom and knowledge about a lot of things in this world because when we get right down to it, a lot of that stuff really, really doesn't even matter. Doesn't make any difference. Because, Lord, I do believe that it's appointed and the man wants to die. I believe that my days are numbered. I believe that you know exactly when that's going to be. You know how it's going to happen. I, I don't know if I'm going to allow everything between now and then to, to work the way that you want it to. But I believe that ultimately you're in charge and you're in control of my life. I don't want to lean into my own understanding. I don't want to do things my way. I want to do things your way. I want to live in the truth. I want your truth and your comfort and your peace in my life. And I, I pray that everybody that's listening to me right now, I pray that, that your Holy Spirit has spoken to them and they'll, they'll have the same truth that I do. Maybe that, that something sparked in their mind and in their heart that, that before this day's over, if they've not already made that choice and that decision, that they will do that today. And Lord, once we've done that, once we've made peace with you, a lot of things really, really seem so small because we can trust you. We can trust you. There's no other way to be happy except to trust you. And so, Lord, we, we close this service today, Lord, asking you, wherever people are that are listening today, if they're uh, in their homes or somewhere else or even with us as we, uh, as we live stream today, Lord, speak to our hearts. Help us to see, to know, and to understand the truth. And Lord, we give you all the praise and honor and the glory for everything that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I want to encourage you to find that truth that we just talked about today. And I also want to encourage you to stay connected with one another. Um, just because we're not meeting together in a church doesn't mean that we can't still have contact with each other. Pick up your telephone, text somebody, call somebody. Uh, if it's somebody that you've wondered about, something that, um, you know, somebody that you would like to keep up with, call them, check on them, make sure they're okay. Uh, and if you're somebody that needs something, you can call me. You go on our website, um, find the telephone number. If you don't already have it, contact us any way that, um, that you need to. If you, don't, if you can't figure it out that way, call somebody else that might know. Um, I want you to know I love you. Uh, I love you, Rock Church. God has placed a love and a desire in my heart for you. And um, that's my ministry. The ministry that I talked about a while ago. Make full use of the ministry. I want you to know I love you. I care about you. And... Um, Maybe you have questions about something today. You know, I, um, I'm pretty transparent. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. I don't try to hide behind uh, a whole lot of things. You can, I'm just a regular guy. You can find me pretty easy. So um, I want to say God bless you. I, I thank you for tuning in with us today with our live stream. And just keep up with us at the Rock Church. We'll be back soon. Uh, I'm pretty confident of that. So God bless you. I love you. Thank you.